Are cutting tests with swords in videos useless? Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Guy Tutorial. Now, anyone who watches my channel regularly will know that I do lots of uh, sword reviews and I often include cutting as part of those. And cutting is indicative of various things. And I want to start off by answering my own question that no, I don't think it's useless. I think um, cutting has a lot of uses. And I know that there have been people within various swordsmanship communities, um, both uh, HEMA, so European martial arts, as well as Japanese and other, that have argued that um, test cutting, as we often call it, or uh, tamishigiri, cutting of targets, is is overrated and a little bit useless. Well, first of all, I want to say I certainly don't think it's useless. I think it has many uses, but we also have to caveat that by uh, or qualify that by saying that there are there is only a certain amount of information that we can use it for, and we always have to um, add lots of caveats in to say exactly what it is demonstrating and what we're trying to show. Are we trying to show the uh, qualities of the sword, or are we trying to show the qualities of the sword person? So quite simply, we should always remember that cutting things with sharp swords is, as well as training, is fun. We do it primarily because it's fun, I think. That's the main thing. Uh, but often when we're doing reviews, or when you're looking at any reviews of swords on the internet, you'll often see an, an element of the review which is cutting up tatami mats or water bottles or bam, green bamboo or whatever the target is, and I'll talk about different targets in a second, uh, we'll see a cutting element to the test. Now, this is the headline that I want you to go away from this video with. Here's the problem. The problem is that when a sword is taken out of the box and you use it for cutting through a target, there are a huge number of variables in how, that, how well that sword performs. And I would argue, if all other things being equal, if the sword person is equal, if the targets are equal, and these kind of things, and again, I'll talk a little bit more about those, I'll um, unpack that in a second. Really, the primary thing that is being tested when you see how well a brand new sword out of the box cuts is sharpness. Now, sharpness is a quite problematic thing, because if we're reviewing a sword, there are many aspects of the sword that we're reviewing, the fit and finish, uh, how, if it's a replica, how accurate of the, of the thing it's replicating is it, um, all sorts of things, you know, the edge hardness, all sorts of things we might be uh, reviewing. Every little, uh, every little aspect of how that sword is built um, and its design and everything else. But fundamentally, when you cut a target, let's say we on, let's say we only cut tatami mats, and they're always the same type of tatami, tatami mats, and they're always prepared in the same way, and they're always uh, used in the same weather, and I am always the same person using the same amount of skill um, and luck and everything else. When I cut that exact same target in that exact same way with 10 different swords, the primary thing that will result in a difference in result is sharpness. Now, that is a thing, okay? That's something we want to review in a sword. Sharpness is something that is worth noting. But here's the problem. You can have a fantastic quality sword that isn't very sharp. They just haven't quite got the sharpening as uh, good as it could be, or indeed as well suited to the target as it could be. And yet again, I'll come back to targets in a minute. Um, or you could have a really terrible quality sword that, that has got all sorts of cosmetic issues. It's not a very close replica. It handles like crap. We see this on shows like Forged in Fire quite often. It would be rubbish as a weapon. It would be rubbish as a sword and it's rubbish as a replica of what it's supposed to be a replica of. But it's sharp. It's really sharp. And if it's really sharp, it will cut to tummy mats really, really well. And um, one of the problems with these reviews is when you cut through your water bottles or your tummy mats or whatever you use, you'll often go, well, wow, that cut like a dream. I felt no resistance going through the target, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of this can just purely come down to sharpness. And I've often noted uh, in the past, and I'm actually holding, it's not, a, um, it's not by chance I'm holding this specific sword. This is a nice replica sword. This is a Dynasty 4 Joe Katana. It is a really nicely built sword, but out of the box, it wasn't very sharp, and therefore it didn't perform very well in most cutting tests against most targets. I'm in the process of sharpening it, uh, giving what I would class as the final honing or sharpening of this blade, so that it will perform a lot better. And then it will be a really, really good sword. Whereas a sword that comes really super sharp out of the box, but isn't a very good replica, I'm not going to be able to make it any sharper, 
and it's never going to be a better replica. So that's really the headline I want you to fix in your minds. And if you only go away with one piece of information from this video, I want it to be that. It's that fundamentally when people do cutting tests on video or in real life, whatever, uh, with a brand new sword, really the primary thing that's being tested uh, or demonstrated in that cutting is how sharp is it. Then you can have a fantastic replica that just isn't very well sharpened and if you're good at sharpening you can make it super sharp and it will cut amazingly for all the years to come but out of the box it won't cut very well if it's not sharp enough. Now for the dedicated viewers who want a little bit more deep information there are some other things to unpack here. Okay so one of those things is um, the variables involved in cutting. So as mentioned, there are a lot of variables in the targets used. And I always say this with plastic bottles. I use plastic bottles quite a lot in my videos because they're disposable, they're recyclable. I, we have loads of them and you know, so they're free to use. And also they're a fairly con consistent, relatively consistent and universal cutting target that are used all over the world by lots of different people. And for the most part, a Coca-Cola bottle in the UK is the same as a Coca-Cola cola bottle in the USA or Japan or wherever. Um, but there are some variables and what I always know is there are variables amongst different types of plastic bottles. So for example fizzy plastic bottles are made of thicker plastic than milk bottles. Milk jug type plastic bottles are the easiest to cut. Um, things like ginger beer plastic bottles, so very fizzy things that can explode if not treated right, usually have the thickest plastic and then there's everything in between. So there's a lot of variables just in plastic bottles. And if you take something like tatami mat, uh, then there is even some variable in those because you get different uh, qualities of tatami mat sourced from different places. Uh, that might be slightly different fibre thicknesses um, and um, also the way you prepare them can be different, how long they're soaked for and then uh, if they're allowed to dry out at all, how long they've been sitting in the sun, what temperature it is. Uh, Matthew Jensen uh, mentions quite a few times on his channel that in cold weather the, the moisture inside the mat starts to freeze and becomes much harder to cut. In hot weather that would obviously be the opposite. So there are all sorts of variables even in the relatively uh, homogeneous uh, world of tatami mats but then if we go to something like wood and I sometimes cut green wood in my videos again it's very subjective because I might use hollywood for one target I might use ash wood or willow for another target so there's difference of woods also how long is that wood when was it cut how long has it been sitting there what's the weather like that makes a big difference as well so there's all sorts of variables in targets and we shouldn't forget that so the same sword with the same sharpness used by the same person can perform differently on the same target used at different times now actually the bigger variable even than the targets is the person, okay? Huge variation in an individual and between different individuals. So one person, someone like Philip Martin is an exceptionally skilled cutter and someone else might be way, way less skilled or just not as good um, or not as consistent. So a person themselves can be inconsistent from one day to another. I think there's a couple of uh, well-known YouTubers who do a fair amount of cutting uh, and you can see them cutting way better one day than another day. So you can have variables within a person and then also obviously big variables between different people as well. And you know some of that can come down to you know what's going on at the time, how focused you are, how many videos you've shot that day, how much cutting you've done that day. Did you cut yesterday so you're in practice or did you cut only last month so you're out of practice? Um, also luck. Um, so these things amount to how well you cut the target and those things result in better or worse edge alignment or placement along the blade where the center of percussion is or um, angulation slightly if you're um, placing the hand slightly higher or slightly lower at the moment of impact, how you're stepping, how you're twisting so many human variables in how that sword will perform. And I just want to reiterate as well the fact that uh, I'm not in any way saying that therefore you know test cutting is not a, a useful thing to do and as always I think that it's maybe not as useful or it's not as um, important a training aid as some people make it out to be. Um, I think if you only cut targets and you never fence, you never, you never actually really train with a resisting opponent for example, you're only practicing a tiny tiny window of swordsmanship and in fact you know a lot of people uh, can fence but they can't cut and a lot of people can cut but they can't fence and if you actually want to learn swordsmanship as a, as a rounder thing you need to do some cutting, you need to do some fencing, you need to do these various things together. But just to conclude and come back to my main point that I want you to go away from this video with 
it's that when you're watching reviews of swords and there is a cutting element, bear in mind all of the uh, caveats and the, the details that I've mentioned in this video, but also remember that fundamentally, if that sword's new out of the box and the person hasn't sharpened it themselves and made it as sharp as it can be, then fundamentally what you're seeing is a test of sharpness and you can have a really quite a poor sword that will cut quite well because it's super sharp and you can have a really good sword that won't cut very well because it's not sharp enough. And one minor detail to add as well is that a sword that's not really sharp might still cut certain targets quite well. Uh, famously, a few people have demonstrated you can cut tatami mats with a basically a butter knife sharp sword if you've got good cutting mechanics and edge alignment. However, try doing that on certain other targets like a uh, plastic bottle for example, and people poo-poo uh, plastic bottles but you do need a sharp edge to get through them completely different result. Equally, some blades move faster than others and a fast moving blade will perform better on some targets. A fast light blade will perform fantastically on water bottles, for example, but won't perform so well on wood, whereas a, a, a doesn't need to be so sharp, but a, a slightly weightier, slower moving blade will often perform better on a harder target like wood. So again, what the targets are will give you different information about that sword. But always we come back to sharpness and Unfortunately, a lot of new swords out of the box are not as sharp as they really optimally need to be for that type of sword and to perform as well as they can against multiple different targets. Um, and indeed, as a weapon, as a sword, they're not as sharp as they really should be. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily tell you overall how good quality the replica is. You can have a good quality replica that just needs a better sharpening job um, and that's something to bear in mind when you're watching these tests. I hope this has been informative and useful. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, I've got tons of other videos that might interest you and I'll see you really soon again on the channel um, or on Patreon if you're one of the supporters on there and take care folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.